up on UCF Sports Night, a coach in a player's uniform. We take a look at the men's basketball team's lone senior, Drew Spiroff. And volleyball season closed with a huge win. We talk with head coach Todd Dagenet. All that and more next on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Hey there and welcome once again to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for spending some time with us this week where we've got a huge show for you as we take a look at both of the basketball teams. They both had huge non-conference games this week against some major opponents. But we start with action on campus on Tuesday. No games on the slate, but a big announcement here at Bright House Network Stadium as the football Knights, with their 8-4 record found out where they'd be going bowling. The week started on a fantastic note at Bright House Network Stadium as the football team announced they had accepted a bid to play in the 2009 St. Petersburg Bowl. It's just the third time the Knights have gone bowling in school history and the first time they'll play in a bowl game held in the Sunshine State. At the press conference, President Hitt, Athletic Director Keith Tribble, Head Football Coach George O'Leary and Executive Director of the St. Petersburg Bowl, Brett Delaney. So without uh, wasting any time, I'd like to tell Keith um, we're, we, uh, we want to extend this official offer to you um, from the St. Petersburg Bowl, from ESPN, and our advisory board to, uh, to come visit and spend time with us in St. Petersburg on December 19th, and we hope you guys have a great time with us. Um, thanks, Brett. Uh, on behalf of the University of Central Florida, President John Hitt, our football program, and most importantly, our fans, we accept your invitation. The Knights then waited almost a week to find out who they would play, and it will be the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. So the final slate for the matchup in the St. Petersburg Bowl, UCF against Rutgers, the Knights versus the Knights, in the St. Pete Bowl on Saturday, December 19th at 8 p.m. at Tropicana Field. For more information, visit www.ucfbowl.com. Later that same night, the men's basketball team took the floor against an old friend as former UCF assistant coach Steve DeMeo brought his Newberry team to town. And they made a good account of themselves in this one, keeping it a little too close for comfort for much of the night. However, it was the Knights who remained on top throughout, led by A.J. Tyler, who sank 8 of 14 shots from the field. He scored 16 points and grabbed 9 boards. Also, Taylor Young came off the bench with a solid effort, 11 points and 6 assists for him. And Keith Clinton also finished in double figures with 10 points, 9 boards and 3 assists. The cherry on top was right here as A.J. Robson hits this tough layup, 2 of his 7 points to go with 7 assists. The Knights would shoot 50% from the field for the game and pick up 25 assists on their 33 baskets. And they would go on to the 18-point victory over Newberry, 80-62 at UCF Arena. The following day, up in Jacksonville, the women's basketball team came up with a resounding road victory, 84-68 over the Dolphins of JU. Emma Cannon led the way with 23 points and 14 rebounds. She was 9-16 of 16 from the field. The women's hoops team was back at home on Sunday as the Knights faced a Pac-10 opponent for the first time in school history as the Washington Huskies came to town. It didn't start out well, though, as Washington jumped out to a big lead at the half. But the Knights would hang around thanks to Marche White. And here she gets the steal and goes coast to coast for the layup. What a play by Marche. Later on, Asia Patrick gets a steal of her own and does the exact same thing. UCF on the comeback trail against the Huskies. Second half off the Janae Daniels steal. White again from deep this time. Three of her team high 19 points, and the Knights were coming back against Washington. However, despite the comeback effort, UCF would come up just short against Washington. Final score is 62 to 59 at the arena. Meanwhile, up in South Bend, Indiana, the men's basketball team faced a tough test against Luke Heron Goaty and the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. The Irish picked up the victory 90 to 72. This thing was tied at the half, but the Irish pulled away. Three Knights finished in double figures, led by Keith Clanton with 14 and 7 boards, but it wasn't enough to get the win in South Bend. 
And of course, for more news, scores, and features from every UCF sport, all you've got to do is log on to UCFathletics.com, your online home for UCF sports. Well, don't go away. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, he's the lone senior on the men's basketball team, but he's become a coach on the floor. We get a look at Drew Spiroff when UCF Sports Night returns. Knight fans, UCF is going bowling. The Knights are heading to the St. Petersburg Bowl to take on Rutgers on Saturday, December 19th at 8 p.m. under the dome at Tropicana Field. You can find out more, including ticket information, at 407-UCF-1000 and at www.ucfbowl.com. This is my UCF. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Drew Spiro of the men's basketball team wants to get into the family business, and he's getting a head start on it right here at UCF. The son of Kirk Spiro is in his fifth and final year in the black and gold, and he's working on his master's degree both on and off the floor as the lone senior on the basketball team. We got a closer look at Drew Spiro in this week's Sports Night Spotlight. Uh, I started high school, I was at Oviedo High School, I played there uh, about four years of basketball, four years of football, um, finished in 2005 and then I came to UCF, UCF was always something that I really uh, had in the back of my mind that I wanted to do, come here and play basketball if I could. As an undergrad I studied uh, finance and I had a minor in coaching, uh, then, then as a, this past year I started my master's degree and I'm doing a sports and fitness masters. Um, which is uh, we have a concentration in uh, coaching and sport leadership. Coaching is definitely something that, that has always been in the back of my mind since I was younger. I was starting to coach my little brother's uh, rec league teams at like eighth grade. I was doing AAU throughout high school a couple years. So coaching is always something I've had passion for and, and I like teaching on the court and, and being involved with the teams and uh, having an impact on players. You know, Drew would sit down toward the end of the bench when he first came on board, his redshirt year, and during timeouts, you know, he would run up to the huddle uh, to where the coaches were standing uh, before Coach Spiro went in and talked to the players on the bench, and he would say, hey, CB, you know, did, you, did you hear the other team call out this particular play? They called this play X, they called this play Z. Um, and I started to notice that he was picking up on things uh, while sitting on the sidelines and observing the game. So it let me know that he was really in tune, and that's kind of what we are always preaching to all of the guys. I, I think that that's kind of a running joke with the rest of the team. They always are saying, hey, you're, hey coach, what's going on when I'm out there or something, and sometimes that guys will come to me if there's if other coaches are busy and they'll say, hey, what, what was I supposed to do here or exactly how am I supposed to position myself? So it's been a, a situation where, you know, I've been blessed enough for people to to see that I know what I'm doing and that they'll feel comfortable in coming to ask me questions and at the same time I can give them correct answers. Early on in the season when we throw a lot of uh, different set looks uh, at our guys, different plays, Drew will go over and rehearse those plays in the dorm room, in the cafeteria, he'll sit down, take a napkin and, and draw up uh, particular plays just to help familiarize the new guys uh, with those sets so when they come back to practice. You know, we, we think that these guys are geniuses, that they remembered everything that we threw at them, and really it was Drew behind the scenes kind of getting them uh, more comfortable with everything. I think Coach Spiro definitely sees, you know, future coaching for, for Drew, um, you know, again, because he is passionate about it, because he is instinctive, he does pick up on things, um, you know, that just the normal eye uh, doesn't see. It's not really about that it's my last year, it's about that um, we want to be successful as this group moving forward. I'd like to think that I can leave the program in a better spot than what I than what I came in with it, and I think that we've done certain things like that. I think this young group can uh, can definitely move forward and have uh, great success. And for more information on Drew and the rest of the men's basketball team, visit UCFAthletics.com. Don't go away. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we sit down with head volleyball coach Todd Dagenet 
to look back at the 2009 season and ahead to 2010. We've got that and plenty more when UCF Sports Night returns. Night fans, UCF is going bowling. The Knights are heading to the St. Petersburg Bowl to take on Rutgers on Saturday, December 19th at 8 p.m. under the dome at Tropicana Field. You can find out more, including ticket information, at 407-UCF-1000 and at www.ucfbowl.com. So 1975, the United States ranked third in the world in percentage. Must be the new guy. I guess we can say I was with you guys the whole time. New guy. UCF and the Central Florida Research Park have helped create 41,000 jobs and contributed about $3.3 billion to the regional economy. Three, and that's only new girl. So if it seems like your company's growing, it probably is. UCF stands for opportunity. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Joining me now for a look back at the 2009 UCF volleyball season, head coach Todd Dagenet. Coach, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me here. No problem. Uh, as we look back at it, you know, it's a it was a season of ups and downs. You know, you guys got off to a great start, then cooled off. Uh, when you look back on it and you place a letter grade on the season, uh, what would you give? What grade would you give the 2019? Well, I think you know we we knew it was going to be that way from the beginning. We stated clearly from the beginning that this was going to be some sort of a rebuilding year, and we had some success early. So we felt like, wow, you know, this might not be as much of a rebuilding year. But again, we look at this; it wasn't a one-year thing for us. We really were looking at a two-year cycle, and so I, I think we're more at midterms right now than we are at the final exam. And, and so I, so far, I guess I'd have to say kind of an incomplete. Uh, because this is really a two-year year for us, and we're really only halfway through this cycle that we wanted to get through. All of the things that happened throughout the year, there were some great moments that happened, and one of them was at the very end of the season uh, with the victory in the corral at USF. Um, would you say that that was the best moment for you for the season? I don't think there's any doubt that that's the best moment. I mean, we showed what you can do when we have, you know, a week of preparation, when we have better health, um, you know, and, and we prepare ourselves to be able to play a tough match like that. And, and we went out there and easily played the best that we had played all year. But, you know, we had a lineup now that had been in place six weeks. We had a good week of workouts and rest and preparation. And uh, it, was, it was nice to be able to go out there and execute the way we knew we could. And you look back and say, wow, you know, I really wish we would have done that earlier in the year. But the reality is we weren't physically in the position where we could do that. When you look at uh, the young players in that lineup that, that performed not only so well at, UC, at, at USF, but uh, really at many times throughout the season, a lot of the young players who contributed when they came in, I think it was, what, eight newcomers, seven of them freshmen, uh, how would you evaluate their performance throughout the year? Well, I mean, it started off early with Nicole Rydell. We realized that Nicole was going to be a big player, and then, of course, with her abdominal tear, we lost her for the year. Meredith Murphy stepped on the floor right away in the libero position, never you know, relinquished that role, passed a 2.3 on the year, which is incredible uh, for us. And knowing that we have that kind of stability in the libero position for three years to come is really a good feeling. Uh, Evia Vilde really built up along the year. She knew the things that she needed to work on, and uh, as the year went on, she got stronger and stronger and stronger. And so again, it's another great three-year player that we have. And, Tori McCutcheon, I think, ends up being the, you know, the surprise of the class. Um, we yank her off the end of the bench and uh, you know, blow her redshirt year. Now she has to play, and she ends up being our most productive middle by the end of the year. And so uh, all these freshmen came in and contributed significant time, but the best part of it is, is they all get to come back and continue to contribute significant time. It's, uh, it's almost like they're... They're all sophomores already now, right, with the, with the experience that they gained. I think once you get about a good five or six weeks of collegiate competition under your belt, you're no longer a freshman. And we depended on them. I mean, Tori McCutcheon, we depended on her to win a match. You look at the game log and all the big kills when we needed them or the big blocks when we needed them, Tori McCutcheon was the one that was scoring that. And that was a kid that wasn't going to play this year. So she really grew up, as did all the other freshmen. They had some good leadership uh, behind them as well. Three seniors that you lose, Aaron Campbell, Andy Youngblood, and Lauren Williams. Uh, tell me your evaluation of them as well uh, with regards to just the leadership that they provided you both on and off the floor this season for the team. Well, you know what they did is they really bridged the old to the new. Um, you know, they brought the lessons of the old and helped bridge it to go in the right direction for the new. And I think it's the one thing that they did that was the most admirable thing. 
you know, we asked them, please you know, make sure that this team stays together the whole year. And it's tough when you're losing matches to, to stay together and, and, and keep that teamness, team togetherness. And they never let it fall apart, not once. We were true to our rules all the way through, and I'm really, really proud of the leadership. Looking ahead now to 2010, uh, I know you are already. I know you also have one signee in, in, in play already, and you're work, you guys are working all the time on recruiting. Uh, what are some of the things that you're looking forward to in uh, heading not just into the spring of 2010, but also into the summer and fall? Well, one of the things you don't get to do with the freshmen is you don't get to work with them much on their individual skill. We had to take time out of practice to do that this year. In the spring, it's all individual skill work. And, and that's the thing we're all looking forward to the most is really building them as individual players and then kind of the cohesion of putting them back together as a team later in the spring. The best part for us is we get to get in there with them individually and start working on their really tiny deficiencies. And so we hit the court next fall and we're going to be a much stronger individual effort kind of team. Coach, once again, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll thank see you. you again in the spring. That sounds great. All right, Head Coach Todd Dagenet, UCF Volleyball. For more information on the team, visit UCFAthletics.com. Don't go away. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we take a look at the week ahead, what's going on in UCF sports, and also our top three plays of the week. Don't go away. We're back in just a moment. Night fans, UCF is going bowling. The Knights are heading to the St. Petersburg Bowl to take on Rutgers on Saturday, December 19th at 8 p.m. under the Dome at Tropicana Field. You can find out more, including ticket information, at 407-UCF-1000 and at www.ucfbowl.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. Our plays of the week are on the way in a moment, and we'll also have a look at the next few weeks ahead for UCF Sports. But first, let's have a look at some news and notes from this week. More congratulations to pass along to women's soccer head coach Amanda Cromwell. Earlier this fall, she was named Conference USA's Coach of the Year for the first time, and now she's been named the Southeast Region Coach of the Year by the National Soccer Coaches Association of America. It's the second time in her career that Coach Cromwell has been named Regional Coach of the Year. She also won the award in 2004 from Soccer Buzz. Coach Cromwell led the Knights to a 17-5-1 record in 2009 and the Conference USA regular season title. The Knights were ranked as high as 8th in the national polls and compiled a 5-2-1 record going through the second toughest non-conference schedule in Division I, including victories over Duke and Florida State. The Knights then went on to go 10-1 in Conference USA. Through 11 seasons at UCF, Coach Cromwell has a career record of 158, 68, and 15. And in football news, Rocky Ross has been named to the Conference USA All-Academic Team. The senior wide receiver from Jacksonville already has a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and is currently working on a master's degree in sports and fitness. He has a cumulative grade point average of 3.88, which is the highest of all 11 members of the conference's all-academic team. Ross was also named to the ESPN The Magazine Academic All-American Second Team last month. Time for our Sports Night Plays of the Week. Play number three, men's hoops against Newberry. Watch Keith Clinton drive in underneath, draw the D, and then drop it off nicely to Kuba for the two-handed jam. Hang on to the roof, folks, as Kuba nearly brings the house down with the dunk. Play number two, more men's hoops. Taylor Young with the steal here. Up ahead to A.J. Ramsa, who beats everybody down floor, goes up and under with the double poke reverse layup. A little extra degree of difficulty on that one for A.J. as the Knights went on to knock off Newberry in the dungeon. Play number one, though, belongs to women's hoops. Watch Chelsea Wiley here off an offensive rebound. She fires a three, it's short, but then follows her own shot. What a play, gets the board, scores the tough lay-in, and is fouled. What a great effort by Chelsea, helping the Knights come back against Washington on the home floor. And those are your Sports Night 
Plays of the Week. Both basketball teams continue to ramp up their schedules as we look at the week ahead. Saturday, December 12th, the men's team is back home for a matchup with local rival Bethune-Cookman at the Dungeon. Tip-off is at 5 p.m. and you can see the action on UCFAthletics.com or hear it on the Knights' flagship station, 740 The Game. Meanwhile, down in Boca Raton, the women's team faces an in-state foe, the Lady Owls of Florida Atlantic. Tip for that game is at 7 p.m. and you can hear the action live on UCFAthletics.com. On Monday, December 14th, the women's team is back home again for a big non-conference tilt with a major opponent as the Crimson Tide of Alabama comes to town. Tip-off for that game is at 7 p.m. and again, you can see it live on UCFAthletics.com. Looking ahead to the following week, Wednesday, December 16th is another big night for both hoops teams. The women are at home to play a huge one against Florida State. Tip-off for that game at the arena is at 7 p.m. and you can see it on UCFAthletics.com. Also, the men are on the road down in Tampa to play their rivals from USF. Tip for that game is also at 7 p.m. and you can hear it on UCFAthletics.com and 740 The Game. It's time to go bowling Saturday, December 19th when the Knights take on Rutgers in the St. Petersburg Bowl at Tropicana Field. Kickoff is set for 8 p.m. and you can hear the game live on the Knights flagship station 740 The Game or see it on ESPN. This week, tune in for UCF Sports Today with Coach George O'Leary, presented by Holler Classic. Join the coach and Pat Clark for insight, analysis, and in-depth features as the Knights look ahead to the St. Petersburg Bowl. The show premieres on West 2 and also airs throughout the week on UCF TV, Bright House Sports Network, and Sun Sports. Check your local listings for times in your area. And a quick reminder, you can catch UCF Sports Night all week long on UCF TV. The show also airs throughout the week on Bright House Sports Network and Sun Sports. Check your local listings for details. And for all the latest news, scores, and features from every UCF sport, log on to UCFAthletics.com, your 24-7 online home for UCF sports. And as always, if you want to catch this edition again or you want to see any of our archived editions of UCF Sports Night, you can anytime you want on the World Wide Web. All you've got to do is log on to UCF TV's website, which is at www.ucf.tv. Well, that's going to do it for us for this week here on UCF Sports Night. We'll catch you again next week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thanks for watching and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 101.1 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV.